Hi everyone, this is Brad with UnwarredView.com here. I'm going to be showing off the Honeycomb to you. Honeycomb is Android 3.0 and this is the newest version that has come out for Android and is optimized specifically for tablets. Now there have been tablets that have come out before for Android but uh, just have been running off of Froyo basically. These other tablets, uh, well, they've been okay like the Galaxy Tab, for example, was actually a pretty decent tablet. Uh, I had no problems with it at all. The problem is that nothing on it was optimized for a tablet, meaning everything that you saw on the tab, this huge 7-inch screen, was basically supposed to be meant for a smartphone. You know, a 3- or 4-inch screen. It's just being blown up into epic proportions, and everything's just being stretched out, and it feels like it's almost being forced upon. Now with Honeycomb, this is more, hey, this is only for tablets, so smartphones, yeah, you need not apply. So looking at this here, we're just going to go through a, a few of the basic uh, elements of the user interface to start off with, and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about a few other things as well. Now Honeycomb has five panels for your home screen, so I have uh, quite a few different options to uh, put different widgets and shortcuts and apps and things like that all on here. So uh, there's a heck of a lot of space. And that's the great thing about these tablets is like this one here is the Motorola Zoom for example. It's a 10 inch screen and I have tons of space and I'm used to having a 4 inch screen where I just can put only a couple widgets on one screen and don't have any room left over. Now I've put all of my usual widgets and things like that on there. I have tons of space left. Look at this. Like, I've got so much extra space that I can utilize, I haven't really even gotten to yet. So, a couple things. Uh, going into the app launcher here, uh, when you just do a long press on the home screen, this is what uh, shows up. Now, you'll remember on the uh, just smartphone Androids, uh, really, you can see widgets wallpapers, folders, a few things like that, and that's it. And then you have to go into each individual one and then look to see all the different options for that particular category. On here, I've got all five home screen panels just at a brief view, and then each of the categories here is tabs. I can go in, touch each one, and look up all the different options. So like for widgets, I can go in, and I can just pick out whatever the heck I want, and boom, it's right in there. I can go in, and here we have the widgets. The widgets uh, certainly have uh, an added element of awesomeness to it with the honeycomb. Um, with most widgets that you would find on the smartphones, uh, you don't have as much interaction. You still got some, you can scroll through a little things, but honeycomb adds uh, an extra element to it. So what I'm doing here, I'm looking through some of the featured apps uh, offered up in the Android market and they're just stacked cards. And I can just flick through the ones that I don't want to look at and then I can go in and choose which ones I want. And that will take me into Android Market for example. So this is a, a really neat thing about it. Now uh, going into a few other widgets here just going in, you can tell like this here is scrollable. And so is this. Just right in the widget itself. Just really, really neat. So I don't even have to go into Gmail at all if I don't want to. I can just go straight into that email. As far as the rest of the user interface on Honeycomb, just go through some of the basics here. On the top, we have the action bar. Kind of hard to see with this particular um, with this particular background, but zooming in a little bit, you can see we've got the Google search and the voice recognition, as well as over here we've got uh, shortcuts to the app tray and the app launcher. So I go into the app tray, and there I've got all of my apps, and not a whole lot of difference there, except there's one section for my apps. So, you know, I can just go in and put uh, a few certain apps in there as my favorites. So, that's kind of neat. Down here at the bottom, we have the system bar. The system bar never changes. No matter what apps you're going into, this is always going to be there. 
Sometimes if you go into portrait mode, well, then it will just be right there. So, the thing about this system bar is that it combines a couple different elements of the smartphone OS that you would normally see. You have the navigation, <coughs> navigation buttons right here, where normally on a smartphone you would see usually some physical or uh, external touch sensitive buttons or something like that just helping you go backwards into the home screen and the menu well that's all just here purely touch sensitive right in the actual screen itself so here we have the back here we have home we're going to take us back there this one is uh, actually a brand new button for multitasking now this one here is the app switcher thing about this one is instead of having just the icons for the apps like I can actually actually see the last page that I was in for each of these apps so I can go in let's say my music now I can go into the market and that will take me back uh, basically that little tiny panel now has been exploded and it just brought out to full size so now there's going to be certain apps, not all nowadays, but uh, certain apps that will have a menu button um, just included. The thing that makes this unique here is that you had the menu button on all the smartphones and, and any of the uh, the two point whatever uh, Android versions. The menu button was always included no matter what it was there. The smart thing about Honeycomb is that if there's no need for a menu button, it doesn't show up. So right now, we don't have a need for it, so it's not right there. But if we do have a need, let's say we go into Pulse, which is actually a really cool little... Uh, a really cool reader app. Um, the menu button's right there. Then I can go in. And just right down there, it shows me all the different uh, options. So, that's the navigation part of the system bar. And we also have the navigation, or not, sorry, the notification. You know, both N words. So, notification, where I can see, all right, I have uh, something going on with Skype there. And if I had any new messages or voicemails or whatever. <laughs> the voicemail, why did I say that? It's a tablet. I'm sorry. So, scratch that. <laughs> so anyways, any sort of notifications, they're going to show up right there as new icons. Um, you can also see the, the time and the, uh, the coverage, signal bars, and the battery. But then I go in here, we've got two different boxes. One for the most recent notifications, uh, the other box for date and time, uh, certain other pieces of status, like uh, the battery life. And I can also hit this button and get some toggle switches here and adjust my brightness of the screen. Throw in some Wi-Fi and I can even go into the settings directly from here. So, very neat to have that. Okay, now um, another part of the action bar, the one on the top here, is depending on the app that I go into, this is going to change somewhat. So let's say, for example, I go into the internet browser, which has also been a huge improvement with Honeycomb. So we're going in, and you can see here, we'll zoom in, where we've got the two different tabs there for the action bar. Then you go over to the right-hand side, and we have an extra little thing in the corner that shows all these extra little settings. So I can go in, new incognito tab, that's for private browsing, which is kind of cool. And then uh, just a few other options that I can uh, scan through. The keyboard is another enhancement in Honeycomb. It is uh, actually very similar in looks to Gingerbread, but <laughs> since it's made for a tablet, of course, it's going to have much larger keys. It's going to be easier to press. Um, a couple other things, though, to note on the keyboard. Here we have the bottom row which has all these specialty keys, the .com when you're in the browser, the uh, speech to text whenever you're doing messages or web surfing, whatever the case may be. So, like I can press that and just do a simple Google, Google search. Um, uh, some other things that I really like about it is it has its own dedicated tab button. So that way, if I have a like large entry form or something where I'm trying to skip from box to box, I can just hit that 
and it'll take me right to the next box without worrying about hitting any other random keys or whatever. Now one thing that I just really get frustrated by is just the fact that the um, the symbols and numbers button is just right in between the caps lock and the tab. So when I'm looking at this thing, you know, and I'm uh, of course with the tablet, I'm always more tempted to just do the full typing experience instead of trying to peck, 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 peck. Actually have my, you know, all of my fingers and trying to type like I do on a regular keyboard. So when I try to do it that way, this really throws me off having this numbers and symbols right there because that's not how it's laid out on the regular keyboard and it just it doesn't feel natural to me. Personally, I would like to see it somewhere in the corner, just somewhere off, a little bit off by itself. So that way I can just know that uh, that's where it's at and I don't have to worry about hitting any other random buttons getting in the way. The other thing is, like whenever I hold down, like do a long press, I would like to actually see the long press turn it into the associated number with it. You know, so I'm doing U. So I've got those, well, that's nice, but not the number. So, yeah, that just gets rather frustrating. Let's see here. Other uh, One other frustration is when I do try to type like normal, hi there, it's very, it's very easy for me to, instead of hitting the space bar, hit the system bar right underneath it. Because that's just where my, uh, my thumbs naturally rest. It's just right there. And so there's a lot of times where I'm typing along, typing along, typing along, and then all of a sudden I didn't put a space in between two words. It, oh, it throws me off. So that's one thing about the keyboard that I just uh, have a hard time with. So I went into a lot of detail in the user interface and uh, just uh, a few other random things about the Honeycomb. Uh, naturally, this was such a huge uh, revamping for Android to come out with the Honeycomb. It's a, a complete 180 degree uh, turnaround for uh, the way that Andrew looks and feels. So I'm not going to be able to go through everything. I just at least wanted to take you through and get you a brief introduction. Um, there are certainly going to be a, a heck of a lot of uh, enhancements on here that you'll uh, you'll want to check out. It's a it's a great operating system. Certainly, it's still brand new, so it's not running at full capacity yet. At least in my opinion, there's uh, all sorts of different things that need to be worked out. The number one thing that needs to be worked out is the market, because really, there's not a whole lot of tablet apps in here. They're just most of these are going to be apps that you found on just any regular old Android, and they've just been stretched out and accommodating, uh, stretched out to accommodate the larger screen space. But you have certain ones, for example, the Pulse Newsreader that I briefly showed you, and uh, Google Body, which is another awesome app that you can take advantage of. Um, but this one here, it's just taking advantage of all the different features that Honeycomb has to offer and just it's just actually really really neat and I think about when I took an anatomy class <laughs> why didn't I have this app? This would, this would have been awesome so you can go in and just get more details, more names and things like that so just a really, really cool idea. And hopefully they'll expand upon this and, and throw in some more uh, cool features. But that's what I mean by a tablet optimized app, is you go into uh, these apps here, and they're making full use of this 10-inch screen instead of just taking a 4-inch app and expanding it out. So something like this one here, I've put in all these different uh, feeds like some of my RSS feeds, so for example, so there's one for Unwired View where I can go through and just read through all of our recent articles that we've made. I can even go in from there, connect to other links. So 
So this is truly, oops, nah, this is truly making great use of all this extra space. So that's just a, another great enhancement uh, that you'll find in Honeycomb. There are uh, several other things here that I could just go on forever about. Definitely read my uh, review article though because I went through a lot of detail on all sorts of different things. And so uh, I just I definitely want you to go to unwiredview.com and check out my honeycomb review. Uh, I will also be doing a review on the Motorola Zoom itself. So there's a lot of great things coming, so uh, definitely stay tuned. Thanks a lot. I am Brad with unwiredview.com.